The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs> Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. In the previous episode, I drew this sketch, so I had an idea of what the Ouya Portable might look like. But I need to figure out this control area more precisely. So it's time to take apart the controller itself. We'll see what's inside, and then we'll hack it to work with that concept. There we go. Oh, there's more latches over there. Now it's coming. Some interesting designs in this controller. Look at those um, shoulder buttons. It's probably to avoid patent issues with the Xbox 360. I mean, it's still using potentiometers, but it's um, actuating them in a different way. See that right there? All right, I guess let's continue. Uh, these are some beefy screws. Small one was in the middle. Not much on this board at all. Basically just uh, the analog sticks and the analog triggers. But we like simple. There's not much at all in this controller. Uh, we have some power conditioning over here. In the middle here, we have a Bluetooth module, and this is clearly an off-the-shelf module they've used in the controller, which is actually great for our purposes. We can figure out what the pin out of this is, and then just remove this part and stick it into what we build. It is kind of redundant having a wireless controller in a single unit with everything else. However, we know this controller works. I think you can use like Xbox 360 controllers and other USB controllers with the OUYA, but they're not going to have a circuit board this small for us to use, so. I think this is still our best bet. Oh, maybe it could slide apart like a transformer, like you can pull it out of the controller. That might be cool. Let's continue taking this apart now. I don't think we actually need the touchpad. It's not actually required in any games that I know of. These screws are going to probably mount the Bluetooth or the frame around the Bluetooth. Yeah, I mean, pretty much the whole controller is this module, that's really all there is to it. Which is good for us, that's good for hacking. All right, so this is a PCB that's been surface mount soldered, but it actually kind of has these vias that it uses to attach to the board. So I'm going to remove it. Hopefully I don't wreck it. My plan here is to first reflow on some more solder. I use this knife to wedge an angle. Slowly move it up. Okay, I can feel it moving. You're off the force. This is what it was like for the ancient Egyptians to build pyramids. One small step at a time. I want to take this slow for a couple reasons. One, I don't want to rip the pads off the bottom of the board. Also, I don't want to bend the circuit board under this BGA chip and possibly break its connections because we don't really have a good way to reflow that here. So there we go. Clean this up because we'll probably have to reference this board again. Oh look, it's labeled for us on the inside. How sweet. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's cool, Dala. The pinout was conveniently located on the back of this Bluetooth module. So I attach it to a breadboard, and I'm gonna see if I can get it to link to the OUYA system that we built in the previous episode. Let's fire the OUYA back up. 
Okay. I think I have this right, unless I don't. Okay, nothing's on fire. So this represents the link button. Oh, it's already solid. Maybe it already linked. Okay, um, I'm going to attach a jumper and see if I can simulate, you know, pushing buttons on it. Oh, there we go. Cool, so you don't need much to make this Bluetooth module work. This looks pretty straightforward, so I'm going to desolder these analog sticks. I mean, they're, these are exactly the same kind they use on the Xbox 360. But anyway, I'm going to desolder these and also make sure I get everything off of this so we can combine it with this to make a built-in controller for that. Those face controls are pretty straightforward. It's these shoulder triggers I'm worried about. So when you push the triggers, it rotates a disc on the potentiometer for each one of the triggers. And they look like they're mirrored here. If you flip it over though, you see that one of the potentiometers is mounted 90 degrees this way, another one is another 90 degrees that way. The reason that's an issue is because the values coming off of those two potentiometers is going to be different. It's not like the Xbox 360 where basically the two potentiometers are mirrored so you get the same value off each one. Um, the range of voltage is going to be different for the left trigger and the right trigger, which means we can't just build one new trigger and mirror it. We actually have to build two different ones two different ways. I don't see why they couldn't have just had this one down here and this one down there. I know they're trying to you know, not hit these parts, but that would have been so much more straightforward. And we can't get around this because those values are hard coded into the Bluetooth module. So we have to have these potentiometers in this position, moving these amounts in order for it to work. Fail. Now it's time for a tech timeout. We should take a break and talk about project frustration and fatigue. You'll be working on a project for days, weeks, months, and you'll be so sick of it, you'll want to just throw it against the wall and smash it to bits, which will ruin all your work. Sometimes these long projects for us are the same way. Something doesn't work, or you fry a component and you have to resolder a bunch of things. The important thing is you just take your time, be patient, and if you do feel like you want to smash the project, just set it aside and go work on something else to cleanse your palate, so to speak. Variety is the spice of life, and patience is a virtue, according to Rachel Wise and the Mummy. Are these donuts slow fat? Jim, can you unsend an email? Who's the new girl? What's wrong with business casual? Is Carl joining the call? Who keeps taking my sandwich? Do you think I'd make a good stuntman? Have you guys seen Carl this week? Did we get those bonuses yet? Will this software really work? How do you remove a virus? Getting straight answers to all your questions at work. Where is everybody? Not as easy as it should be. Getting answers to product and technical questions from a team of engineering experts definitely easier. Discover how we're listening to your feedback and building a better experience. Oh, Carl doesn't work here anymore. I really don't want to redesign these triggers. I mean, that's the kind of thing that would take up more time than the rest of the case itself. What if we just remove these parts? Because this is what's really awful about it, let's face it. Then we still have these square things we can push. That's actually a nice linear thing. And maybe this is like, you know, shoulder buttons. So here, here. So maybe we take this guy, well, we don't have this whole board, of course, but we take this guy and put him there. And this guy could be over here. Okay, let's pull this guy off. All right, so that disc is attached to the potentiometer. We'll leave that there for now. How much of this do we actually need? I think we could probably make an incision there and there. Rebuilding or reworking analog shoulder buttons sucks. So if I don't have to do it, I'm not going to.
because you're talking about something that's like mechanical that goes against a analog device like a potentiometer. So the positioning of it actually is, you know, fairly important. You basically have to reproduce what you find in the controller and that is a pain. Don't need that. See, I keep removing stuff and it keeps working. I can probably even shave that down to 45 degrees. See, the more stuff we remove, the easier it is to add things, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Now we're probably going to have a PCB of some kind here and also over here that this attaches to. So if you think about this going through a PCB, this would be on the back of it. That'd be all one piece. Yeah, that thickness wouldn't be too horrible. Get down with the thickness. Get, get, get up, get down with the thickness. Wow, did I just say that? Okay, so if we remove this potentiometer from the circuit board, we have to make sure we're, whatever we build has a potentiometer positioned against this in the same position. Otherwise, it uh, won't work because it's baseline. Reference won't be correct. So, desolder the pot. That pad is toast. Come on. The easiest way to do this. There, that's how they have to stay in relation to each other in order for this to work. I'm gonna start with a piece of perf board that's far larger than it needs to be because we can always cut it down. We can't make it bigger. use the cast off portions for other things. So this is this guy here. Here's our buttons. Here's how wide that is. So we want this guy as close to the edge as possible so we can be a, a trigger. Now this was the position it was in. Hopefully these pins line up to a standard pitch. Otherwise, oh, there we go, they do. Oh, there's a hole in the center. I gotta get rid of that. See where the shaft comes through? We actually have to drill that out. <sighs> Remit. It's moving pretty freely now even though it isn't, Rick. <laughs> it ain't your baby. Did you take good care of Lori while I was in a coma? Oh yeah, I took real good care of Lori. <laughs> Lori sucks. I was never so happy to see a character die in a show. Spoiler warning. Rick, you've got to do what's best for your people. So this would be the um, left bumper button. In case you really can't, oh, these guys. Or shoulder button or whatever they call it on these guys. So you're gonna have that guy there and you're gonna have your analog trigger under him. And then you're either gonna have your buttons or your 
analog stick right there. So I think we can make this all work together. Tricky part is, you know, we have the um, solder pads on the top here. So we either have to attach the wires down here or sneak them in the back. I'll probably just attach them down there. It's a little easier. Then I can use the frame of this tack switch and solder it in place and that should hold it pretty good. This is a tack switch from an Xbox 360 controller, which I have tons of for some reason. I don't know why. I think this is a pretty good start. I'm going to make a mirror version of it. I have now mirrored the part left and right. So we have our analog triggers, our shoulder buttons, two analogs, the OUYA buttons, the U button, whatever that does, I think it turns on the controller, and the D-pad. And these will flank left and right. Again, I made these circuit boards a little bigger than they needed to be, so I can always cut them down if I have to. And I guess since this one is a mirror from an evil universe, it needs a goatee. That way you know it's from an evil universe. It's the only way to be sure. So far, we've combined the LCD and the OUYA into one single unit so we can put it in a portable device. Then, we took the controls and built them onto some perf boards by hand. Now comes the real hard step, designing the case. I've got to take all of these parts and draw them into the computer, one by one, make sure everything is fairly accurate, and then I can design a case around the parts. And we can make it using the 3D printer and probably the laser cutter. So that's all the time we have for today. In the next episode, we'll build the case and put it all together and finish the OUYA portable. We'll see you then. We'll see you next time. You can go home to your families now. I'll just keep working. You're still here? Don't you have any place to go? Don't leave that in. I think there's a fine line between superstition and getting footage. Very fine line. A thin red one, if you will. It's my circuit board. Let's talk about jackets. Here's how. <laughs> if it's another boring black jacket, don't even waste our bandwidth. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs>